Mars in the sign of Aries. In retrograde motion, this is what we are going to be talking about, and how is this really going to create influences in our lives as we step into the month of September onwards until the end of the Mars retrograde cycle, which will end on November of 2020. Even though that we are already quite used to this energy of Mars in the sign of Aries, because it's been with us since June of 2020, um, this could be an element still that can create some form of shock into us one way or another. Because Mars, when it is in retrograde motion, basically will make us more aware of what Mars is all about. So contrary to what other people think about Mars retrograde, because some people would say that it's going to make me feel weak, I'm, I won't have the energy to take action or do anything. Now, this is going to be a case-by-case -case basis because some people might actually have that tendency. Some people might feel weak, but at the same time, some people will actually take a lot more action than usual. So, what are the qualities of Mars anyway? Mars has a lot to do with action, has a lot to do with energy, and it has a lot to do with drive. Okay, my 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 pen is not working right. And you know, Mars is also has a lot to do with sex. You know, so a lot of things are actually here. And overall, Mars is definitely intense. Remember, Mars is in the home sign of Aries. And Scorpio all at the same time. Can you imagine combining Aries and Scorpio into the mix of things? Being very close in existence to your re reality. That is just crazy and insane. And the interesting part here is not Mars retrograde alone. Because, you know, Mars retrograde in Aries is not going to be the whole picture of things. The whole picture of things and the reason why I'm showing you the chart as we go along with this is to show you guys the aspects that are actually happening um, as Mars goes into retrograde because all of this aspect is going to create the storyline of what's really going to be manifesting and what is really going to be, you know, becoming a major influence basically for each and every one of us. It's going to tell us what are the dynamics that can be affected um, by but in our life in a very personal level basically so the number one thing that we do notice here is that you know it is making a conjunction to Uranus and you know Uranus is the planet of surprise shock and you know sudden ideas so be because you know Mars is retrograde and be, be being an RE with retrograde, it still has a lot to do with re-evaluation, reconsideration, all of the re-return, you know, re-existence, you know, those kinds of things. So there, there is a tendency that we might become reflective also with this, you know, it could be that there could be a sudden idea that comes to us, you know, it's going to be very internal. But of course, you know, depending on what is your rising sign, depending on what, how, where is your Aries, where is Mars and Aries right now in your chart, this can definitely um, manifest in different and various ways. So, you know, we need to keep that in mind as well. But on a general level, this is going to give us a lot of ideas, a lot of sudden insights. And at the same time, we might be more aware of, you know, if you are feeling too much of the Martian qualities, you know, because yes, we do have a lot of action, drive, energy, sex, intensity and in overall. But on a difficult level, you know, this can manifest manifest in anger, frustrations, and, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and that can really create a lot of stress as well. 
also interesting is that you know Aries is a very young energy. It is an energy that gives us you know. It has a lot to do with being youthful. You know, it's young, it's small. <laughs> you know, it's it's our head. You know, we don't really manifest things in our head, but that is always the starting line. So, it could be that there is a situation here wherein you know, young versus the old, because we have here you know these three planets in highlight. Um, we have you know Saturn in Capricorn, Pluto in Capricorn, and Jupiter in the sign of Capricorn. So I would say that you know there is something that has to do with foundations into things. Uh, I I draw her house to make it faster. There's going to be having a lot to do with foundation into things. So maybe you know it maybe it has a lot to do with histories of the past because we are dealing with a lot of retrogrades here people so and retrogrades has a lot to do with the past so it could be problems maybe big problems from the past can be in focus as well so those are the things that might occur this is going to allow us to really really take action to really be more impulsive and i would say that because it is making a lot of squares right now and remember we still also have this square into venus all at the same time and being in a fire sign this might be a situation wherein how we express things how we talk to people can result into anger you know yes you know, on a beautiful aspect, you know, I don't want to be all negative here. On another level, this can be, you know, we can be very excited, you know, we, we, we think of wanting to, um, to, to do something, do something new, do something playful, all of that. It can really give us a lot of fun, a lot of excitement even. So let's put fun here. Fun. And a lot of excitement and it has a lot to do with the heart uh, venus and the sign of leo is very attractive in its own way especially with that degree you know three to five degrees are really really a wonderful aspect into things so we first of all we might be thinking about love we might be thinking about commitments um and we might be thinking about our money and possessions also because you know foundations and venus is also the planet not just of love but of money as well something that we take ownership of you know those are the things that are also in focus right now there could be also a situation wherein we might decide to cut things out because mars likes to strike likes to cut and you know it might be a situation wherein it takes in to get something for himself or herself but at the same time this can also be manifesting in a way wherein we don't want to to work on something anymore it's something there's something that we don't want anymore because also we have that Uranus energy and, you know, Uranus has a, has a very strong energy of Aquarius. Has a lot to do with people, yes. With the masses, yes. And has a lot to do with cutting things out that is not necessarily needed anymore. It could be that, you know, you might have an idea that is so unique, so unique that it clashes to the foundations into things you know clashes with authority figures problems that has a lot to do with legalities that can actually you know be a bigger influence here at the same time also remember we have this you know venus in the sign of leo making aspects to to neptune you know this is actually quite interesting because it has a lot to do with the coronavirus so, you know, of course, I'm going to, you know, if I do talk about this, I'm going to expand to various things because there's a lot to talk about with, with this um, chart, basically. And you might be quite confused, like, we're talking about Mars retrograde. Why are you 
going across the entire chart. That's because Mars retrograde is going to take an influence on this. First of all, Mars does talk about diseases, talks about, you know, you know, inflammation, allergies, and all of that is making an aspect to Venus. And I, if you have watched my previous video, like, I think early this year of 2020, I did post a video about the coronavirus astrology. And I did mention there that September is going to be a highlight for coronavirus. And September is also the time we're in Venus is actually in the sign of Leo. And I highlighted there that coronavirus is actually Neptune in, 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 Le in Leo, basically. So it has that form of energy. So it's going to be interesting and in how this is actually going to manifest. Is it going to worsen or is it going to heal? But in my prediction and that video, I did you know, emphasize that this might be an energy of healing one way or another, or at the very least, we are already on that track. We are working on it. And, you know, it's going to be like the same here. We are fixing problems. We are fixing something that has to be, you know, implemented, you know, and it could be something that's very, very new, very, very unique. And people, especially very traditional people might you know, be put off by the idea of doing this. So I don't know what kind of invention people make during this time as well. So um, also the reason why I'm talking about this day of September 10, 2020 is because the moment that Mars goes into retrograde, that time, those aspects, the position of where Mars is, those are the areas where this is going to be very much in focus, very much in highlight. It is going to be the beginning of everything. And of course, um, this is going to be varying depending on what location you have, you know, where location you are. Uh, Mars is going to be situated in a different house maybe, but for me and to the location that I have in Asia, it's on the 8th house. So I did remove the information on the location because I don't want people to get confused that like, for example, if it's in USA or Minnesota, something like that, and people will say that this is only happening in Minnesota. No, it does not happen that way, okay? Astrology doesn't happen that way. What happens in the sky happens to each and every one of us. It's just that the positioning of where things are is going to be different for each and every one of us. So I just want to, you know, put that, that out there just in case you're wondering why. So, um, yeah. Also, we have this um, moon in Gemini at this time. It is making aspects, if you guys notice, this red lines um, showing up over here. It's making aspects to this Mars in Mars retrograde in Aries so you know our communication lines could be stressed there is going to be frustrations definitely and even though that you are the most peaceful people you are someone that's very harmonious you might actually notice that you might be ending up but butting heads with people you know so it's not something that we can control and no one can escape from this energy basically because it's really, really going to manifest regardless of what sign you have, what what aspect is happening to you. Of course, depending on whether Mars or Saturn is situated harmoniously in your chart, this can actually manifest in different ways. But it doesn't always mean that squares, you know, squares is what you guys can see with these icon um, in this chart. And it doesn't mean that it's a square would mean that everything is in chaos, everything is a problem. No, actually, these squares that you guys see in the chart is actually a point of action, a point of frustration, a point of challenge, a point of oppression maybe but this is a point wherein we are going to engage into taking action engage to to doing something and to engage in 
accomplishing a task. So there is something that we actually want. Let's not also forget, before I forget to mention, is that this Aries in Leo has a lot to do with happiness, you know, joy. This So being in a stressful lines over here, it's like, we might be in a situation wherein we are being confronted or we are questioning that ourselves that we we should be happy we should be enjoying things there's something that i want to do there's something that i want to feel but i'm not feeling that i mean why is that happening so there could be some form of stress right there and we are wanting to resolve that there's something that we want to resolve and some form of idea is definitely going to be manifesting just be careful though um again i cannot stress this enough that this can definitely manifest in some form of frustration and anger management issues so a lot of things can blow up, you know. It could be in a literal level. It could be internalized as well. It's, it's not going to be very much surprising when people actually fight to each other or even if they're not fighting to each other, you know, one little bit of mistake, one little bit of action can put you off. So it has that form of energy all at the same time. Now, let's move to the next date that we have over here. Now, this is the September 24 of 2020. Now, we, we do see that, there, that Mars is now being separated with Uranus. And then we have here the moon in 29 degrees, very near to the degree of Mars. So... It is making some form of trine, which is actually pretty wonderful. Now, I did talk about relationships, right? See, um, let's highlight the the main players of this whole cycle. And let's not forget this too. This time, the sun goes into the sign of Libra and relationships. And we will see that, you know, 26 degrees, 25 degrees, they are in close proximity and that is going to create a big T-square. So T-square, there is an opposition and a square. Basically, that's what it means. So it's going to affect this part of the chart, Mars and Mercury. So Libra. Libra has a lot to do with relationships. When Mercury is in Libra, we want everything to be perfect. There's something that, you know, we want everything to be in coexistence with each other and we, when we talk we want things to be you know crystal crystal clear so that's basically the energy in this and because of the activation of the libra energy there could be a tendency that we might be feeling attacked especially libra or you might be the one who is attacking someone you will notice this i mean there will be cases wherein we are, you know, fighting with someone or someone is fighting with us. Some form of argument is happening right there, which can create a lot of nasty things. This can also be a situation wherein, you know, relationship focus can be quite stressed during this time. And, you know, there's a lot of things, a lot of reflection needs to be done, basically, is what's showing up here. It's basically just the same old, same old thing. But here we see now that there is a Queen Cunx happening with, um, with Venus and Neptune all at the same time. So this can be an element of, you know, I would say this is the time where we, we might be at the climax of frustration. Like, there is definitely something happening right there. This could be a situation wherein you might be, you might need to confront something. You might need to take action on something. There is something being initiated or being being started, you know, whether you're the one who, who is initiating this or someone is suddenly coming into your life or someone is suddenly presenting you, whatever scenario. Um of action there is you know uh, also this is going to play like you know a male and a female role 
Mars in the sign of Aries is definitely a male sign, which is, you know, let's say male. And here we can say female. So here we have this opposing factor. So there could be fighting or opposition does not doesn't always always mean fighting, but that there's definitely some form of confrontation. And it can be something that's actually wonderful. You know, there could be some form of fated event that can manifest during this time as well. However, you know, it's not something that can easily give you a very happy feeling. Maybe there is something that can make you feel conflicted in this energy. And, you know, you might need to to work on that on, I don't know. I mean, I feel that this has a lot to do with commitment issues that can come up. So it can be a very, very um, frustrating time. It can be a very stressful time. Um, and even though if, if you're single, this can be a time wherein you are feeling some form of frustration. Like there is something that you want to happen. This could be a time wherein you might begin something, you know, slowly making progress and moving forward with life. This could be a situation wherein you are wanting to, for example, create a business, you know, connect with people because the seventh house in the seventh house in, you know, Libra is not just about partnerships, basically. It's also a it's also about, you know other people when it comes to, you know, sales, those kinds of things. I can't think of the word to explain. But so it has a lot to do with, you know, making money all at the same time, business partnerships, collaborations. So, you know, there could be some form of problems right there or something that needs to get needs to get fixed you know this could be also a situation wherein your emotions are going to be in haywire and you would want to to make something happen and make something to correct something i guess this is really the biggest thing we need to correct something and we are going to realize that there could be a situation also wherein we might come to realize that if if you have been creating a lot of mistakes in your life, if you have been, if you have realized, basically, you realize that, you know, I always butt heads with, with female or male, you know, is this, is this, is this just something that is happening coincidentally because they are wrong and I'm right? Or am I doing something wrong? Being aware of this Martian quality is what this Mars retrograde can actually manifest. Though not everyone is going to realize this. You know, that is already an early disclaimer. Not everyone is going to realize this. Maybe people who are usually very impulsive, you know, very Martian quality or an Aries person might not always realize it. But those people who, who, be, who are really very observant, you know, observant of themselves and other people, they will, you know, notice and realize that why am I butting heads with people and how do I actually resolve this? Now, especially if you are a Libra rising, you might be feeling attacked wherein there is really some form of dynamics that you would want to fix, that you want to, to sort out, basically. This can also be a situation that, you know, involves a lot of your emotions, you know, you, you're wanting to, to heal. Or maybe there is a situation wherein you might need to confront with a person that has hurt you or has attacked you confronting someone from the past you know since I did talk about that because we have this Libra rising and that is definitely in focus so there is a tendency to to, to engage with someone from from the past and maybe to sort things out and it doesn't have to be an individual it could be a group of people even that kind of thing so there's a lot of energy here 
of working things out and correcting things, making things balanced and harmonious at the same time. It's just that the process of how we actually get there is going to be quite um, tiring, frustrating. It's not a very easy transit. Definitely, that's not that. Ne- definitely not going to be easy. Now, as we move over here to October tenth of twenty twenty. We see a lot of red lines here. Don't be scared about that. Um, but definitely this is, you know, creating that very intense square with this energy. See, notice there that Pluto is at the 22 degrees and Mars is at the 22 degrees. That will make them very exact. And this will make a, a big, bigger highlight, I would say, wherein it's more intense which means that, you know, there could be a more frustrating factor and energy we're in, you know. Uh, Pluto has a lot to do with power, power intensity. And most of the time, Pluto is something that we don't really expect. Like some form of power is out there that that w- maybe we are aware, but we we cannot re- it's not really very tangible you know it's not really a particular person even it's just that there is going to be a very very strong energy so this could be a situation that you know can intensify things especially you guys can see this line making a sesqui square with the venus line so you know venus in the sign of Virgo, that is, you know, not a very happy alignment. No, Venus in the sign of Virgo can make us be a lot more practical in things. It's not a very happy and giddy kind of sign. It's not someone that that goes into, you know, I mean, Mars in the sign of Aries is once fun, wants to do things in, in their own way. There is something that that they want to manifest and I want it now. And that is really the thing with Mars, Mars and Aries. I want it now. But this Venus in, in Virgo is all about, you know, there is an element of hesitation right there, element of hesitation and doubts. So this can be a very, very frustrating time wherein, you know, you feel that you want, there is an energy of assertion here. Assertion. I don't know why my pen is acting up. So there's an energy here of assertion. You know, I, I want to do this. I want to do that. But you feel that a lot of people are blocking your way into doing things the way that you want to do. Also, there is a huge focus here with Uranus in the 9th degree, almost 10 already. And here we have the 10 degrees in Mercury in Scorpio. So there is also like, you know, some form of shock can definitely occur. Shock, surprise, and they may not entirely be pleasant. So something is going to shake up your world probably during this time and maybe you know this is going to force you force us to take action to do something that is outside of our comfort zone most of the time because Uranus is definitely talking to us right now and you know I always see Mercury in the sign of Scorpio as a very intelligent energy, very intuitive all at the same time. So this could also be an element of solutions, you know, or figuring things out even behind the scenes. So, you know, you might be finding out something that you're not supposed to find out maybe. So, you know, and especially with the energy of Virgo, which is all about details and stuff like that. So we might be, you know, like a, playing an investigation role right here. So remember that, you know, this energy can be very intense, definitely, especially as we go over October 
this is the energy we're in, you will see a lot of people taking action here and there. And this is not entirely going to be very good for many people. Remember that if you take action in a way that gives conflict to someone, especially when Mars is retrograde, you are bound to lose. So don't try to start a fight. You know, those kinds of things. And yeah, and we're still in the sun in the sign of Libra, making a square to this moon in the sign of Cancer. So this is going to be affecting us in a very emotional level, even though that, you know, we could just find out something that's very real, very, very in our face. And whether we like it or not, this is going to be affecting the security level of our lives, what make us feel safe, what make us feel secure. Emotional security could be a thing that we need to we need to be in focus all at the same time. So um yeah, I also see this as a red alert when I see a very close connection. So I would say be careful of shouting with your elders with your parents that kind of thing also um i actually see 22 degrees as a difficult energy like there's always something going on in this alignment so i would say that to to use this time to maybe take a exercise do something with this martian energy when dealing with mars basically you cannot hide from mars because mars is always acting mars is always pushing us to do something it's like pushing our buttons it's just that you know um i'm not sure if you guys have watched a, a film like uh, dexter's laboratory way back in the past so it's an english um cartoon series that i i usually watch way back when i was young and this dexter is a scientist and has a sister called dd Dee Dee, and he always she always pushed some form of button and she doesn't stop so morris retrograde has some form of energies like that always pushing our buttons and doesn't always stop and that is going to you know trigger us in various ways so it has the form of energy and this can, you know, of course, create anger anger issues, especially it's making a square here with Venus in the sign of Virgo. Like, we are trying to make sense of things, but we are not really able to do so. Again, all of this are, you know, difficult energy, but remember it is in a square, which means that at the end of this cycle, there's actually something good that comes out of this. And maybe, you know, this could be an energy we're in. We are trying not to do anything in the past. And now we are being forced to, to face things and to do things so that we, we confront them, you know. Eventually, at the end of the day, this is something that will actually allow us to to step forward and move forward with our lives because you know um capricorn capricorn is old and it's like a wall basically you know it's like you know a foundation it doesn't move it's even worse than a tree it doesn't want to to move at all you would see that many many times this uh, this capricorn energy is an energy that that stays for a long, long time. It could be a situation wherein you don't want to do anything for such a long time and now Aries is, you know, making you move, making you, giving you ideas on what to do or forcing you into situations that you might be not used to. It could be something you don't like, but it doesn't mean that it's not good for you. So those are the things that, you know, come into play. Now, this is going to be interesting because now, you know, this is a situation we're in. There could be, com slowly we are, you know, finding some form of comfort. Like I said, eventually though, even though that there are specific dates that can trigger some form of stressful and some form of frustrations, 
eventually this will line up in a, a way wherein it will also give us solutions like you know october 14 we have this you know sextile aspect the venus and conjunction with the moon in the sign of virgo and if you if you remembered our previous um chart we're in here we have this you know Vir virgo energy uh, as well so where where was i yeah virgo energy as well so this can you know create solutions to the things that you know gave us some form of trouble before so Virgo is actually the sign of prop of a problem solver. So we might be finding this is an element wherein we might be finding out something. We might be trying to resolve something as well, trying to resolve issues. So even though there's a lot still a lot of squares over here, this is an element of sol problem solving and 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 it's a very easier kind of aspect, I would say because it, it has a lot is it also making a trine with uranus and uranus is a you know the genius you know sudden insight that comes to us it could be that you might be dreaming about things this can also be you know when it comes to to love life to partnerships this this can be a blessing in disguise one way or another also i did not mention this but um, I do believe that Venus is also going to be uh, retrograde within the month of October. I'm not particularly sure, but I'm pretty sure that, you know, there is something going on with Venus around October. So I have to double check that on my chart. Did not really include that because I'm really focused on Mars retrograde over here. So you know, that is going to create, you know, some form of healing aspect. Bringing us back to harmony, bringing us back to peace is going to be a big thing um, as we venture into this. Of course, there's still going to be stress lines here and there, but eventually this is going to lead us to the light, which is, you know, um, something that's really, really wonderful to be experienced now as we move over to october 17 we have the new moon here in the sign of libra so and let's see what else do we have over here and yeah you will see that the lines are a lot more stronger like it's a lot more thicker the red lines that we have over here which means that um, the squares oppositions are actually a lot more stronger so so that is going to be very interesting because what are new moons? new moons are an element of new beginnings oops I tried to fix my mic so I hope that does not create an interference later on but anyway um New moons are all about new beginnings, new starting points. And this is the area wherein we actually, you know, it's like solving a puzzle. And this is where we put the dots all together. This is a situation wherein, you know, we might be wanting to communicate with people and wanting to to maybe solve issues it has still the same energy as what we have because as you guys can see it's already october 17 but we're still having this um aspect with uh uranus so you know mercury and uranus is definitely going to be a big thing all throughout this Mar mars retrograde in aries so and mercury mercury is what planet of thoughts, ideas, communication. Uranus is the internet shock, surprise, cutouts, or, you know, so th that could be manifesting in a very angry issues and stuff like that, like I mentioned earlier. But this is also an element wherein we are figuring things out slowly but surely. 
And that's actually the thing with this Mars retrograde season this year. Is that we are we are not rushing. You know, we might feel like we're rushing during June of 2020. We this is the point where in Mars actually goes in the sign of Aries for the first time. And you know, it's already August. So we are already feeling the energy, but I feel that, you know, at the end of August, as I post this video, this is the, actually the time wherein you are going to feel that, you know, Mars is definitely speaking to you in a very intense way. The first part wherein Mars went into the sign of Aries, it's a lot more, it gives a lot of vigor, it gives us a lot of ideas, but now we're starting to get real. We're starting to get to really talk things out in a very serious manner because it is lining up here with Saturn with in the sign of Capricorn and this has a lot of seriousness to it. This is the old person, this is the young person and you know there is some form of maturity that we need to come across and it might be speaking through the area of love, the area of relationships, partnerships and collaborations at the same time. So we might need to grow up people. <laughs> so um, yeah, that is some, there's going to be a lot of realizations, I bet, as well. So as we go over here on October 24th, still having all of those aspects that I have mentioned, the only difference here is that the moon is in the sign of Aquarius. We have the sun entering the sign of Scorpio in conjunction with um, Mercury. So Sun and, and Mercury in a sign of Scorpio. This is going to activate, you know, that very dark, mysterious side into things. And still, you know, you, know, you might say that I'm quite repetitive, but this is actually the energy here. So I'm just showing you guys... Um, how is this really playing out? And still we have this Mars. Mars is now in close proximity with Jupiter. Jupiter is... Um, Jupiter in the sign of Capricorn is actually a really nice alignment because you would notice that a lot of people who has Jupiter in the sign of Capricorn, they are the ones who did the hard work and actually attained success. And they have become famous, successful, and quite rich all at the same time. So this is the point of our life wherein we might be doing something that can actually be, you know, leading us to the right track. Let's put this out there so that you guys can see. Whatever actions that we do this time, it might lead to the right track. You know, we have all of the insights, you, the the informations and how we actually process things may not be coming in a very logical level because we are dealing with Scorpio here as we have been for, you know, um, this whole October. So any insights that come to you right now will make you feel as if you're coming into the right track and this moon in Aquarius can create can give that inventive side to into us very much strongly it could be something that can affect a whole lot of masses or a whole lot of old people because we're dealing with old people here and mature people all at the same time again you know we might actually um, implement things in a way that satisfies um, both both people whether you're young whether you're old whether you're immature or mature we are now drawing the line into creating a solution into things so something is becoming easier something is becoming accessible during this time you know so this is like a process that w what we are working on now you guys can see um this is going to be a combative time as we go over this um date um october 30 2020 we have here the moon 
Mars in the sign of Aries. Now Moon and the Mars all together can can create like anger issues. <laughs> um, that's just the thing, you know. This can create a lot of excitement, a lot of you know, can trigger us to act. It can be emotionally, ha- emotionally. Um, Emotionally stressful for some, it could be an area where, in, where we are easily mad or easily excited. I mean, it's going to be either of two things. So this can be an area wherein we might do something, create something, or we are going to be implementing the changes or whatever we have realized, you know, through the cycles from the beginning, we are going to be implementing them. That is why, you know... As you guys can see, we almost don't have any harmonious aspects here, except for um, uh, I would say <clears throat> Jupiter and Neptune all at the same time. So we have a few wonderful aspects here, but uh, for the most part, everything is in squares. Everything is on opposition because this is the time wherein we are actually going to take action. There is something that we want to make known. There is something that we want to put it out there. This is, even though that the energy might be internalized, we are starting to shift into the direct motion of Mars. So we are, you know, planning for action or implementing them all at the same time. So we, we can see the dynamics that are going on here. We're in, at the first glance of, Mars retrograde, we are all angry, we are all confused, we are all frustrated, and coming into a situation wherein we're trying to solve problems, we're trying to figure things out, we are accepting our own mistakes, realizing what's wrong with us, what's wrong in the scenario, and coming to a point of realization and implementing solutions to bring back harmony in place. So as we venture to November 13, uh, we will see this, you know, um, this moon and Jupiter in the sign of Libra, which is actually a very, you know, wonderful alignment, can give us a lot of grace, a lot of love all at the same time. We are still in the Scorpio season over here. So there's still like, you know, intensity and re- there's still a lot of evaluation going on. But I feel that there's a lot of more action that are being taken up. So relationships issues can be in focus right now because of that, that opposition. So opposition does not really mean bad or good at the same time it means that there is some form of contact that is happening right there so it could be that you know someone is reaching out to you wanting to resolve things wanting to be romantic you know those kinds of energy in place so this is an energy of there could be sudden ideas that come now this is Now, let us get clear of one thing. This is the time wherein there is no opposition coming from Mars and and Saturn energy and these three planets. In fact, what's happening right now is that it's making a square with, um, with the Moon and Venus, you know? Let's include already that Mercury over here. So... We have already resolved whatever it is that will give us push to take action. And now we are at that point wherein we now want to maybe impl- maybe work the problem, whatever it is. In the relationship scale, this could be a situation wherein the con- the Pushing to take action has already been done and now we are engaging with something. We are now making something happen. So uh, this is this can really happen in a lot of different ways. But, you know, some form of communication, some form of contact is definitely going to be happening. And there could be something good out of that, I would say. 
because you see here that you know even though it's a square it's still going to be a combination of of saturn jupiter pluto moon and moon and venus all at the same time so there are bound to be some form of good success that comes with this it will feel as if you know all your hard work will pay off you will see some form of um you will see that something is actually quite worth it and as we go over to november 15 this is the time we're in mars finally goes direct yay and everything will be in the sign of scorpio and you know venus is still going to be in the sign of libra i guess it's not in retrograde i don't know why I, uh, why i felt that there is something going on with october i i really feel that there's something with october but i have to double check on that so um here we can see that Mars is already stayed clear and now everything is in focus with, you know, there's going to be a new energy of the new moon and the sign of Scorpio, which is, you know, still giving the hint of Martian energy. There, what? Not everyone know this, but, you know, everyone, some people will always think negatively of Scorpio because it's the scorpion, it's the betrayer. It's all about death and transformation. But all Scorpio, the energy of Scorpio technically is something that wants to have some form of security and wants to own that and wants to have that. So that is, you know, something that could be in place over here, but it's going to be a different story overall. But this is now a situation where in there could be some form of harmonious energy we're still having some form of contact here with uranus but you know um this mercury and uranus energy is not always going to be bad it's going to be an element of surprise going to be an element wherein there is electricity you know it's like a bubble that gives you ideas so <laughs> yeah sorry for that drawing <laughs> so it's going to be a bubble that you know gives us a form of idea on how to manifest and manifest things so basically this entire mars in the sign of aries even though it's retrograde is going to resolve quite a lot of things and the beautiful the most beautiful thing about here is that it might even resolve things of the old things that we are we have already given up on so there could be magic in the air that is going to be presenting to us you know some form of miracle might even happen so i do see this mars in mars retrograde cycle giving a lot of miracles and you know putting things in the right place at the right time so since mars is a very male energy male energy i feel that a lot of male is going to be having a lot of influence throughout this cycle and how they handle this energy how they do how they what how they deal with relationships overall because if you guys would know this um throughout the cycle of mars there has been a highlight with aries and libra at the same time so cardinal signs are going to be highly highly affected by this but at the same time they are going to get the most um good results i would say i mean everyone's going to get the best out of this mars retrograde it's going to change everyone's life so um yeah it's nothing to fear yes it's going to be stressful it's going to be challenging but we are all going to be maturing out of this and whatever it is that we begin during this cycle we are going to push things and accomplish things because at the end of the day this is what this energy gives us a sense of accomplishment and that's actually what we all want at the end of the day so um yeah thank you guys for watching and joining in with me i do apologize for the mess that i've been having over here on the charts but it, it does quite 
become repetitive as you go along if you do notice the things that I keep saying but that's just what the energy is all about everything's all about the patterns of the charts and the storyline and the dynamics that are happening all those kinds of things and eventually this is just you know a good reminder that to not lose hope because you know there is going to be some form of beautiful solution that will come to us even by magic, even by, you know, some form of fated event. So, um, yeah, this is my video to you guys regarding Mars and the sign of Aries. If you do have any comments on that and any experiences with Mars and Aries, I'd love to hear about that. Please do leave a comment below and yeah, I'll speak to you guys very soon. Goodbye.